right. Okay. Yes, because this room is a mess, so I can't be that far away, so. <clears throat> All right. Pet sticks to style. What's going on, man? Daddy, I found a chocolate You didn't find it. I moved it. Oh. That's, I'm, please, go ahead upstairs quietly. So those of you guys who are joining us a little early, this is Taste Test number one and his bass guitar. He's had the bass guitar for three months now and he's asked to open up on the live stream with some of the things that he's learned. So Sean, what's going on with you, man? How you doing this evening? You're just going to look at it or you're going to play it? No, I was going to play it. All right, come on. Renew Barbecue, what's going on? Ooh. It doesn't need to be off. Now you're being annoying. Go ahead upstairs. Victor. So what is that? Uh, Red Bone by Travis Gino. What? Red Bone by Travis Gino. Oh. <laughs> I do know how it is, man. You're right. Robert Young, how you doing this evening? says that he wants the front row ticket to the first concert. Well, technically, you're already here, buddy. I can, you can reach out and touch him. You want, just, just, just say touch him. I got you. Come on. Come on. You can, you can do it, Steve. Go ahead and say touch him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Big Will, how you doing this evening? Hey, <laughs> dude, third. We broke his concentration, Steve. <laughs> you gotta play under pressure. That was the hardest one. What's the hardest song you can play? Uh, Why are you breathing like that? Because you were like, mm -hmm, uh, it might be. All right, Big Will. Glad, uh, glad to hear that. Cheeks on my nose. Uh, who? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Or it might be Billy Jean. So let me hear the Sheik song. Messing up my groove here, man. I'm sorry. Try I again from it. the top. Three, two, one. I, I messed that one up. Yeah. The first one was better. Oh, no. Yeah. Try one more time. Third time's the charm. Okay. Or it gets the touch again. <laughs> mm -mm. All 
All right, just Billy Jean. Let's try that one. If you haven't already given uh, Taste Test number one a thumbs up, I would appreciate it if you could give him a thumbs up. A thumbs up, like like thumbs up, Thumb, thumbs up. Every thumbs up you get, I'll make sure you. Oh, oh, there's a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, oh, there's another thumbs up. <laughs> this is fun, guys. Oh, I see three thumbs up now. Ah, come on. Come on, Billie Jean. Come on. Come on. It's a loop. You're stopping. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I may have one more song, two more songs to come to mind that are really hard. Okay. This sandstorm. That's All right. Come on, you, it's not the unts doesn't stop. Grill Sergeant, what's up? Like Night at the Roxbury, you know. So to take your head, look, take your head and go right, left, right, center, right, center. Yes. That's, so look up Night at the Roxbury Saturday Night Live. All right. So go ahead, do it again. Now do the. Daddy Dutch, what's up, Kent? That's a higher. Uh, Oh, yeah, other way. Play it. Play it. I said the wrong one. It's backwards. Gotta tilt your head. <laughs> that's just too much. <laughs> look up. Look up. Um, Night at the Roxbury. What's up, Nick? Hopefully, uh, you're having a good time dropping kids off at the pool. <laughs> this is a, probably the fourth hardest song I know. Maybe. Fourth hardest. If they went and, like, Will it be the one. easiest? Will it be the best one you play? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes? Yes. So I played a lot. Okay. I'll be. Oh, yes, he does play this one a lot. I know, Nick. Hey, Nick, give me a thumbs up so I can I can hit taste test number one with a thumb. All thumbs up that I get, I'm going to be hitting him with the thumbs up. So if you haven't already, please give him a thumbs up so I can make sure he gets his thumbs up. All right. Thumbs up. <laughs> oh, we got we got a couple more. <laughs> There's eight of them now. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, guys. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> All right, come on, one more. What's up, Jay? Come on, quickly. All right, Jay's got tri-tip on the chopper. Nice. That's um, 25 to 4 or 6. No, 25 to 3 or 4. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can never. That's the song you play now. Brick House. You don't know Brick House, do you? Nah, he doesn't know any Brick House. Terry, how you doing this evening? All right. You keep playing. I'm going to go ahead into the other room. All right, guys.
All right. So, thank you guys so very much for hanging out. Ah, uh, you know any Santana? Uh, no. All right. Of course not. Let's see. <laughs> spy versus spy song. He doesn't even know what spy versus spy is, man. Look up. Um. Uh, Night at the Roxbury, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live, and you'll 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 see what I'm talking about. Nanos, how you doing? Frank Oyekumova, he doesn't know that one at all. I know that. Feliz, um, Jimmy, what's? You gotta get your pop pop culture memory up. I know. I oh, know. Ricardo, how you doing this evening, sir? Sent me a pic of what's up tonight. All right, well, I got to check it out, I guess. Uh, hopefully. Okay. So, today, we're rocking with uh, some Crown Apple on the rocks. Nothing fancy tonight. Tonight, hopefully, should be a good conversation about organization and keeping your stuff together and organized. And, and yeah, so I have an insulated cup here with some ice in it. I'm going to put the top on it, and I'm going to sip. Normally, I'm not a sipper, but I'm going to sip on this one tonight. So, hmm. Uncle Rick, what's going on? Brad says he's competing in his first barbecue competition in April. Any tips? Unfortunately, I've only done two competitions, and I am not the best person to tell you to give you tips for competitions uh, other than practice. Um, if you can take some classes on the particular thing that you're going to be cooking, you might want to do that because it doesn't actually... One of the things that I, I, I don't particularly care for about competitions is the aspect that the judges are looking for something in particular and you have to cater to the judges, not what's actually, you know, what, what tastes good, in my opinion. All right, salute. So Big Steve, I don't think I formally said hello. How you doing this evening? Share the crown, all right, there you go. Boom, take a sip, oh, oh, oh. All right, Frank said he's drinking a Corona. Pat, Pat Conti, how you doing? Uh, what's up, everyone? We got Jeff from Northeast Beast Lafo, or we have Jeff, the Northeast Beast. All right, Spanky. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't. I said I don't compete much. I have competed in two of those steak cook-off association competitions, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bumpy, how you doing this evening? I'm good, Pat. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I really, you know, thank you guys so very much for hanging out. Really, really do appreciate it. So tonight's topic, and have we been, oh man, I am, whoops, I never stopped my workout. This is going to give me, I, I think I might need to delete this one because that was, uh, that was not a real, it wasn't a true representation. Anyway. <sighs> Where was I? Um, organization. You guys see, my stuff is all over. I have grills and smokers and cookers all over. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to get a little more organized and, you know, call it, you know, New Year's resolution. Call it just getting sick of stuff being sprawled out everywhere. Call it trying to put stuff in its rightful place. Whatever. So what I did well, over the weekend was I got a, a tool service card from Harbor Freight. Well, actually, I got two of them. One of them is going to be for my electric tools. And the other one is going to be, well, it's on the side of the house. You guys will probably start seeing it or noticing it in some of the videos coming up soon. But what it is is a central place for me to put, like, my thermometers so they're not just sitting out. My other grill accessories, like some of the stuff that I don't use every single time, some of the extra seasonings I put out there in, in that service cart. 
and it's just going to sit, it's going to reside on the side of the house, you know, not in the way, but out of the way so that I can put things away when I'm done. When I'm finished cooking, I can put things away. So that's, you know, one of the things I was thinking about when I wanted to talk about this topic of organization, but I know I'm not the only one that, you know, some of you guys have done some, some amazing things as far as building in or or you know fitting your service carts your grill tables and other things like that with storage options so i kind of wanted to talk about that um and and pretty much go from there so let's see sean says hey i love those foldable containers from your last video he said he owns four of them jeremy bowen says nice yep <laughs> nick a barbecue cart pretty much pretty you know for the most part so the whole thing is when or if I'm going to a competition, now would I really want to roll this cart? I don't know, but it's possible that I roll it with me. And it's basically it's just a toolbox, basically. But you know, it doesn't. It it, it has a flip top and one drawer and then two shelves, so it's not. Um, it's nothing crazy. So Ricardo says, uh, "How long do they keep stuff warm for hours?" Yeah, just I mean. I would I would say that it works as effectively as a camera. Seriously, they really work very very well. The cart does not need a name, Nick. Don't you start that. It has a name. It's in the corner. <clears throat> um, we don't need a name for the service cart. Anyway, but I wanted to hear some of you guys, what, what you guys do for some of your storage and organization, um, you know, things. If we could get this party started. No, we're not naming the service card. Nick, I'm going to box you, man. I'm going to box you. Dude, <laughs> we're not naming the service card. <laughs> Here we go. You can you can call it whatever you want to call it, but there will be no official name for the cart. There's not. It's just gonna be the, the that's where the barbecue cart is. That's that's where the stuff that's on the side of the house. This it's its organizational corner. That's it. Freaking BBQ three PO. No. Carlos says I'm having my food truck built right now, and I'm looking for organization ideas too. Man, you know what? Um, I think pegboards are pretty cool. And it's not green, it's black. Pegboards are pretty cool, as well as those magnetic strips. I am a visual person, so I need things to be kind of in my direct sight in order for me to remember where they are or know where they go. But, you know, it's one of those things where you, you put it in this place, and then when you, you can at a glance see what's missing. So, yeah. Uh, Robert Young says the foldable chill chests are $9.99 at Home Depot and Walmart. Are oh the chill chest. So the, the chill chest or the one that you might be speaking of is a little smaller than the one that I have. Uh someone else brought up the chill chest, which is a, another brand of that same foldable poly polypropylene. I, I don't know. If that's what it is. Probably uh, poly whatever it is, the dense hard plastic or dense hard foam. Uh, but Chill Chest is another brand other than, you know, whatever the brand that I showed you was. Um, <laughs> all right. So my buddy Nick says, if you use pegboard, don't get the fiber ones. They will soak grease. So you can get, I looked into some pegboards on Amazon and they're like metal pegboards like thin sheet metal um, so that might be an option obviously when you're cooking he's saying that the, the the fiber ones will soak up grease so if you're cooking you don't want that plus if you're trying to put pegboard around like in a food truck or in a you know somewhere where you're gonna be cooking you're probably gonna need to be able to wipe it down so yeah the barbecue says I got a dedicated cabinet in the kitchen for my spices and sauce I have a smaller cabinet in my dining room for all my other equipment. I need to get a bigger one of those because he's out, he's outgrown it. I can totally understand. Oh shoot, Spanky says, "Look at those Milwaukee uh, toolbox on wheels." No way, I know better. I, I 
Plus, I'm a DeWalt guy. Bam. I'm a DeWalt guy. But, yo, those uh, Milwaukee tool, like, rolling tool chests, man, if only. You know what? I would, I would... I would sell all of my DeWalt tools right now if my Milwaukee sponsored me and, and gave me access, you know, keys to the castle, basically. Um, yep, I agree. Rick, Rick says he's seen some spray paint can holders at Harbor Freight, thinking they'll be good uh, spray bottles for sauces. You're, you're probably right. You know, one of the things that I like to do is if I have a, a need... I can go to Harbor Freight and I can figure out something that I can do or use to fulfill that need. I mean, you know, you got real guys go into Harbor Freight and they don't see the tool for what it is. They see the tool for what all it can be. And I'm definitely that guy. Like I have re like I said, that tool cart that I just got, I didn't put any tools in it. I'm using it for my barbecue stuff. Nolan's Food Fan for Life says uh, spices and sauces and barbecue tools in my barbecue cabinet in the kitchen. Firewood outside with the fire pit and smoker. Small smoker charcoal. Seven chimney in the garage. I uh, sit everything out the night before, which is a good idea. Um, I try to be good enough to do that, but uh, sometimes my schedule just does not allow me to get things prepared ahead of time. Brad Barton says, I use a metal garage shelving unit in my basement to hold all the barbecue goods. All right. Uh, Sean says he bought his from Web Restaurant. Cool, cool. <laughs> Spanky says, bam. Frank says, I'm a Milwaukee guy. Yo, yes. Nick says, the walk for life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bottle Cat Barbecue says, I'm a craftsman guy. Craft man. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Tim Allen joke. I put them on the test in my workplace and hands down Milwaukee. Well, you know, nothing wrong with that, man. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> uh, can you roast BBC on a BBQ? I might if I were into that sort of thing, but I'm not, so I won't. Here's your warning. Nah, nah, I didn't see it, but I know what you're talking about, Ricardo. <laughs> Smakey says, I bet we have Chicago Electric guys here. Hey, look, you know, it's funny. I think I do actually have a, like, a half-inch Chicago electric um, electric impact. That was the first one that I bought. And, man, it, it worked very well. Um, it just it doesn't hold the candle to the DeWalt, like, full-size half-inch. Uh, my buddy Nick says he's a craftsman hand tool, man. You know what? I, I guess I am as well. I have multiple craftsman sets um the only thing when it when a person broke into my garage he stole pretty much almost an entire three-eighths set that i had from when i was 16 when i got my first car and i bought my first tool set the one that rode around in the car with me i'm pretty sure he picked picked the pieces out and he took a three-eighths three-eighths set Terry says he likes Porter Cable. All right. George Rushing, man. It's been a while, man. Good evening, people. Can't beat Harbor Freight when you're in a pinch. You know what? Uh, I you know, I really hate buying tools from Harbor Freight in a pinch. And I'll tell you why. It's because I know that I can get it on sale for 20% off. So I try and stock up and or wait for the 20% and now the 25% off for the major... Like, you know, every, like, once a weekend or, excuse me, once a month, you'll get a 20% off coupon, right? But now, around each of the holidays, you can get a 25% off coupon. Now, the only caveat to that is the 25% and 20% coupons are now starting to limit. And I know I'm yawning already. Sorry. They're starting to limit the things that you can get, which sucks. But you just have to be crafty. 
about the things that you buy and when. Yes, uh, Nick is, so Nick drives a Jeep. Um, we're, we're not going to give him any grief about that. But feel free if you really want to. Uh, but Nick's Jeep is very well organized because he goes off-roading uh, in his Jeep. And when time is of the essence, things have to be organized. But I think that comes from my, my buddy Nick also works on a uh, volunteer fire truck. His volunteer. So if you've never been to a fire station and seen how organized a fire truck is, wow. I'd highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. All right, Renu says uh, for his charcoal and wood, he built wood shelves in his shop to hold them, hold them all, and he just recently built some tables for filming area. Well, that's cool. <laughs> that's definitely cool, man. It seems like you're you're thinking ahead, you're future planning. That's dope. Uh, Nick says bulk ten millimeter sockets. You can never have enough ten milli ten millimeter sockets, and wrenches. That's for sure. Um, bottle cap says I use a Rubbermaid drawer set to hold on my temp probes, injectors, PVC hooks, brushes, miscellaneous small tools. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, Spanky, I think everybody gets their nitro gloves from Harbor Freight. I know I buy them by like half a dozen at a time. All right, Ricardo says he's no mechanic, so not much on wrenches, but on power tools, he prefers Royobi cordless. Well, Royobis are, are a decent brand. There's Royobi, uh, you know, it's one of those things with Royobi. I know Royobi is sold in exclusively in like Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, but you know what's crazy? Like Royobi is the sister brand to like Porter Cable and Porter Cable is, it all trickles up to like DeWalt or actually Black & Decker, uh, which is crazy. It's the parent company for, for DeWalt. Um, I've told you guys before, I have a friend that works for Black & Decker, DeWalt, whatever you want it to be. Um, so twice a year they have a sale. And when they have a sale, it's an employee, you know, it's employee sale basically. So you can get stuff at just over cost. And I go in there and I am like, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. And then I'm like, oh, well, I have one of these, but I need another one of these. So I can have them in two different places. So I don't have to always make sure that I take this one from there. But that's the problem because that was how my tools got robbed from the garage. I took them out of my car and I left them in the garage. So the tools that I've gotten recently have all been riding around with me. So this other cart that I have to put together will be where I will lock the tools up inside of it and I can leave them in the garage. The weed torch from Harbor Freight is awesome. Yeah, I've had one, I had one for a very long time too. Um, but like, there was something on it that broke and then I just kinda went and bought another one and then took the, the dead one back. I think I have two of them currently, but I really only use one at a time. Uh, let's just get them cheaper at Sam's. What is that, uh, Sean? What can I get cheaper at Sam's? Top gloves. She's a CNA. Well, Terry, all of us don't have nurses for wives. Man. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, Fred, so over the summer, somebody broke into my garages and, and stole, like, stole all of my DeWalt electric tools. Yeah. Uh, yep. Jay said, I just got some coffee rub from Hawaii. Got a package today. Speaking of package, I got a package today too. Oh, um, so the thing Sean, is those gloves that you get from Sam's versus Harbor Freight, they're different. And I have really small hands, so I can't wear just any type of gloves. Um, Cause I bought those like fake plastic food food service gloves. They do not work for me at all. Um, I and I really don't like the latex gloves. 
One, because it's crazy if you have a latex allergy and someone prepares food, your food with a latex glove on, you can get sick. And two, the latex gloves just aren't thick enough. I find that the nitro gloves are just thick enough where they they last a little while longer, especially while doing food service. Um, so that's that's that, yeah. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Keep hitting the... <laughs> yeah, Terry, not all of us are that lucky. <laughs> Chocolate Capricorn, Happy New Year. I don't think we've seen you or you have joined us in the live stream or on the live stream since the beginning of the year. Yeah, Fred, uh, yeah, I can't use those gloves, unfortunately. Oh, well, no. Yes, broken into my garage. Chris Venata, how you doing this evening? <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, dude, uh, Ricardo, I love those uh, those boxes too. I have a few of them, like the full flat boxes, the Space Saver ones. I got them from Costco though. I think when I got them, they were on sale for like $5, like 5 or $10, uh, but they definitely you know, fold down. I know. Thank you. Look, I know people who chocolate Capricorn. I was talking to uh, someone. They were helping me with this uh, the the breakfast at the school, and they both run volunteer do volunteer firefighting, and one of them is a EM EMT maybe. I don't know if it's EMS or EMT, which which one they are. But anyway, they're like, oh, you need gloves? I'll, I, you know, such and such. I'll have my wife bring you a box because they both run on the volunteer, um, on a volunteer firefighter or are volunteer firefighters. So, yeah, they do the same thing. Speaking of firefighting, firefighter 440. It's going just fine. It's going. Lou Calamatis, man. How, how you doing this evening? Well, Lou, I was talking about how I repurposed a service cart that I got from Harbor Freight, one of the lesser, the cheaper service carts from Harbor Freight, the one with the the, the flip box and the single drawer uh, to put my barbecue stuff on the side of the house. It just, you know, having it sit out, sit on the shelves, sit underneath this thing, sit underneath that, just, just got kind of tired of it. So I decided to do a little bit of organi organizing so I uh, put some things away. Small hands. Uh, I don't know, Spanky. I was being facetious. You see how big my head is? Yeah, I don't have small hands, unfortunately. Uh, been getting the nitro gloves off Amazon. They're cheaper at heart. Heck yeah, man. You get them on sale. So when you get gloves, the nitro gloves off Amazon, they work out to be about $10 maybe or $12 for 100 When you get them from harbor freight you can get them a hundred when they're on sale for five dollars per box uh the most i will spend on the nitro gloves like when i'm in a pinch and i need them is six dollars per box and then even when sometimes when they're six dollars per box you can use the 20 percent coupon to get um you know what is it a uh, dollar 20 off so you figure still right about five bucks actually i think when they're not on sale they're seven dollars or eight dollars and then you can get the 20 percent off but when they're on sale they're five dollars a box and when they're five dollars a box i buy no less than, than half a dozen of them boxes half a dozen boxes barbecue 951 says they passed the law about latex gloves in california i guess you know there are enough people that have a latex allergy mr hocker said hey yo What's up, man? Don't be sorry about being late. I'm just happy you, you were able to join us. Uh, so Rick says, uh, Dash, what's your preference on hand utensil cleaning while catering away from home? So one of the things, uh, Ricardo, I try to do, one, I try to have a utensil that I use and then a an extra. Because there are times when I don't always have a hand washing station or a dishwashing station. So if I drop something, if it if it falls, then then that's it. 
Uh, there are times when I am out, like I've been out in, a, in the middle of a park and there's no place for me to do any of that. There are times when I will carry like a little, you know, one of those, like um, the containers that you would put uh, water in, in the refrigerator. And it holds like two gallons or two and a half gallons of water. I will take one of those with me places sometimes. And that will be just, you know, if I have to wash something off, if I have to rinse something off, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that or use that. But one of the things I found is when you use those, you need to have a collection, um, like place or, or the ability to collect whatever waste water you have. So you have to be careful. But more often than not, I try not to get my hands dirty. I will use gloves and I will go through some gloves. When I am on site cooking or doing something, I change gloves like, like the weather. OK, uh, as far as utensils and tools, if, again, if I drop a utensil and I only have one and I'm like, I'm, I'm SOL or I have to find some place to wash it or I bring a backup you tool to in order to cook with. And it has happened, man. You'd be surprised. You get to moving rather quickly. And so usually I, I try to bring two spatulas and at least two um, tongs. And one of them is a backup. Always one of them is a backup. Need some trailer work uh, in the new trailer. Oh, all right. Well, let me know, Nick. Uh, get your gloves in Uline. I don't. I still don't think Uline is is that much cheaper. I actually got a Uline um, book today. Hey, Mr. Hawkins, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Yes, sir. Uh, Frank says six dollars for a box of one hundred. What is the thickness on those gloves, though, Frank? Because yeah, I might have to look into that. But like I said, I get them for five dollars per box. Lou says he has a dedicated, uh, decent sized cabinet. Uh, well, I have a decent sized cabinet dedicated for all my rubs and smaller barbecue equipment, like probes, spatulas, tongs, and stuff like that. Cool. <laughs> Call it a cart, man. No, we are not naming the cart. I found your channel yesterday on a video about buying a food truck. Good content. Well, thank you very much, Dex. I appreciate that. That is so cool uh, that that video drew you here. And not only that that video drew you here, you're here right now. So thank you so very much, Dex. Uh, we had a Black Friday sale at Northern Tool. Gloves, four bucks a box. Well, thanks, Spanky. You know, good looking out. Thanks for telling me. Thanks for hooking a brother up. Hey, Meeg says another thumbs up from this guy. You missed it. Earlier, uh, when you guys were giving me thumbs up, I was hitting Taste Test on number one because he was playing the bass. I like the quality of Harbor Freight gloves, but hate the color. Man, uh, why? <laughs> Just, that's a small little thing, man. That's a small price to pay. I mean, I don't even notice the color anymore. You know, the, 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 the thing I notice about it is when I'm doing different things around the house and I'm like, oh, oh. like, because when I'm working on my cars or if I'm doing something, you know, I won't say labor intensive, but I will use the thicker nine mil nitro gloves and they're black. Now, if I could find some black gloves to cook in, that would be great, but I prefer the blue because you can see the dirt on the blue better than you can on the black or something like that when and or if you're cooking with them. So I like the blue because you can see when they're dirty a little bit easier. Uh, same thing with the white cotton gloves too. Uh, this is, I have to be organized too. I get my nitro gloves at the Restaurant Depot. Don't remember the price. Wow, well, I didn't know Harbor Freight had nitro gloves. Heck yeah, man. Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> this man used this five second rule. Look, dude, you know, it was one time where I dropped something and I was like, the fire will kill the germs, right? Yeah. Like early on, I was like, the fire will kill the germs. Yeah. And the whole thing was, I had like a water bottle. And so I heated the tongues or the spatula up and then like, like steam cleaned it. And I mean, got a paper towel, wiped it off, and I was like, ah, I 
Like, note to self, bring extra spatula next time. Uh, Rick says, I'm looking for a good, strong magnetic knife holder that mounts to a wall. Any recommendations? Yeah, the, 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 um, the magnetic strip from Harbor Freight. It's designed to hold wrenches and screwdrivers. You don't think that'll be able to hold a knife? I do. So Kent says Daddy does, uh, or excuse me, Kent from Daddy Does Barbecue says, find a square buckets like Kitty Litter comes in. Use one of those for clean water and one for waste water. Uh, clean water and one for waste water. When you fill one, you empty the other. No problems. Hold four gallons. Yes, sir. I do have some of those. And actually, one of the things that I did, I'm trying to think, was it, was when I, um, I was somewhere and I used buckets as my weights. So as my, um, the weights for my, for my canopy. So I do definitely actually travel with a bucket or two. So yeah. Yep. Uh, Nick says the big orange Gatorade jugs work really good. For cleaning on a spot, I agree, and I do actually own one of those. So, usually though, five gallons of water is just a bit much, uh, especially when I'm usually just traveling rather light. But um, I have used a like the, the smallest one I think I had was like a gallon, and the biggest one was like two and a half gallons, and that was like usually overkill. But I, those little, you know, and this, the whole thing is they're like meant to go in a refrigerator shelf and put water in them. But I just fill them up with water and take them with me and then go from there. Beautiful Grill, what's going on? And I do not have any recommendations on a good electric wood splitter. Um, I mean, I've really only, the only log splitter I've used is the one I've used for my arborist. And I, you guys have seen it in a few videos. I helped him get that thing back together. The part of the, the like the track, the tray, whatever it was, it broke off and I, I welded it back together. So anytime I need to use it, I just go down there and pick it up from him and bring it back to my house. And I split whatever wood I need or he has no problem bringing it to my house and dropping it off. Um, and then I use it and then just take it back down there to him. So, unfortunately, I've only ever used a big, like a 10 ton, 15 ton. I don't even know if it's a 20 ton. I don't know. Um, but a gas one, a big gas one. Hey, yo, Kirk, what's happening with you? Oh, man, Russell, don't you start that. I'm I'm actually looking forward to the fact, I'm, I'm happy the fact that my beard is growing back in. Especially considering it's only been about two, three weeks now that I've cut it down. Da, 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 da. Get the orange gloves really cheap, uh, and I'll pay more for the black ones. Well, I yeah, I don't mind the blue ones. That 214 boy says, if it's an Earl Campbell sausage, that thing getting eaten as long as it ain't no dirt on it. Well, you, yeah. B says, what's the smallest smoker you ever cooked a brisket on? I guess that would be the bullet smoker, the little Brinkman bullet smoker. That was technically the smallest smoker I've cooked a brisket on. To the point where I had to like fold it up and twist it in order for it to sit on the grate because the grate was so condensed. It was only like an 18-inch grate. Bottle cap says, Harbor Freight don't have black gloves. I might keep paying more simply for the cool factor. No, Harbor Freight does have black gloves. The black gloves you can get from Harbor Freight are 9 mil nitro gloves, and they only come in a box of 50, and they are more expensive than the 4 mil nitro gloves that come in a box of 100 the the nine yeah the nine mil gloves actually do work very well and they are sturdy like i could work on my car all day long in the same one pair of the nine mil black gloves versus the four mil blue gloves man 
as we're changing one tire or getting one tire off the car, if I'm doing brakes, I'll need a new set of gloves. But usually the black ones can last for quite a while. Uh, Terry says he uses the busboy uh, tubs when he's out. I, I do too. I use the busboy tubs more for carrying things and bringing things back in and out of the house. Uh, but I don't actually put, I try not to put any liquids or anything in them because after a while they stain. There are rubber coated magnet strips that are for knives so the metal doesn't scratch the knife. Uh, my buddy Nick says, so yes, and what you could probably do is just do something simple and put like electrical tape over it or duct tape even so that your knives won't get scratched out. But um, those, there are magnetic strips that you can get from Harbor Freight rather inexpensively that'll do the same thing. Yeah, well, Nick, your knives are a little more expensive than, than my knives are, so I understand that. Uh, Russell says, Dash, I need your recommendation for a good medieval coming-of-age movie. Uh, medieval. A Knight's Tale. That was a good one. Or what was the one? Was it Robin Hood? Like... It was like a farce movie. But, but A Knight's Tale was good. It was a really good movie. That's like the only one that I can think of. But what about um like Princess Bride? Was that like m medieval coming of age? I've actually never seen the entire Princess Bride movie. Um yeah. Late Eight says, what's up? Have you ever competed before? And if so, do you have any advice for someone looking to start? This is the second time I've gotten this question tonight. And I've only done two SCA, which is the State Cook-Off Association events. And I can tell you that competitions are not my thing. I seem to just, I don't know why I continue to do the SCA event. It's probably just because I want to get better. I want to do better. But I have very little desire to do a full-on competition. Very little desire. Uh. <laughs> oh, Russell, I see what you did there. Show us is good evening, my barbecue people. <laughs> Sword in the Stone is a good one. Men in Tights, that's the one I was thinking of, but I couldn't I couldn't uh, think of the, the name. Uh, oh, Princess Bride, great movie. Shrek, ooh, well played, sir. Mimi Keel, how you doing this evening? Good evening to you, too. Yes, I have tried Walker's Wood Jamaican jerk seasoning. Um, funny enough, or oddly enough, I actually did some jerk leg quarters tonight, today, this evening. The paste, I actually prefer a dry rub uh, jerk seasoning over a paste. Now, we don't necessarily use Walker's Woods, but I have had it. The only problem with Walker's Woods is whenever I find it around here, it's hot. Um, they do have a medium, but that medium is still too hot for like taste tester number three. My wife sometimes has a little issue with some of those uh, jerk pastes just because they are potent. Um, the, the dry rub that I have, the the Caribbean dry rub or whatever it's called. It's it's like right here. Definitely middle of the road. It's not too high. It gives you a decent jerk flavor. It, it you know it, it, it tickles all the right the right taste buds and senses without being too hot. So that's the one that I usually stick with and my go to. Uh J Beats and Waves, how you doing this evening? Excalibur. Ooh, that's a good one. Hi, Jack. Hi, Betty. Macy O says, sup? How you doing, sir? New York, New, excuse me, New Jersey. Definitely represent it. Mm. Lou, I will keep that in mind, sir. What's your opinion on the trio smokers? Uh, I have the Oklahoma Joe offset back at home. What trio smokers? I don't. Is trio the brand or like uh, 
Does it do three different things? I don't know. Timothy Daniels is a big hello from our family at ACT. Australia. Wow. Well, thank you guys. I mean, it's got to be pretty daggone early for you guys over there, right? It's what? Um, 10, 12 hours ahead? So it's tomorrow. What's it like tomorrow in the future? That was one of the things when I was in Germany and in the UK, I was in the future. So I would talk to my kids and, and other things like that. And it was always just cool to be talking to them from the future. So... All right, Kirk says there was a series on Templars on Netflix was pretty good. Try Oak Tree. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. It Look, you know what's so funny? Last night I tried to go to bed or I went to bed a little early. I was in, I was asleep by about 10, 10.30, which is rather early for me. This morning I woke up, it was like 3.05, and I was like, ah. And I looked at my watch and I was like, Yo, it's three o'clock in the morning. I don't need to be up for another hour, hour and a half. And I was like, well, do I just go ahead and start my day now? And I was up for like 15, 20 minutes before I fell back asleep. So this morning started a little earlier than normal. But at 4.30, I got up and got, you know, got dressed. Yes. Steve, again, I'm not disagreeing with the flavor. It's just, it's hot. I don't mind the heat, but my wife and kids do. So I have to think of everyone. And and Walker's Woods is like, whenever I talk about anything jerk, there are four or 5,000 of you who always recommend the Walker's Woods stuff. Tron, how you doing this evening? Uh, good evening to you too, sir. <laughs> Timothy Daniels is 1.41 p.m. It's great in the future. Well, awesome. Mr. Hawkins says Excalibur or Pulp Fiction didn't get medieval. Yeah? Don't? Yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I take a sip of your refreshing beverage? I have a serious question for you, though, Mr. Hockett. All right, you ready? What does Wynton Marcellus look like? <laughs> uh, Kirk, you have you 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 right there. He said if he was in Australia, he'd already gotten paid. I guess he gets paid on the sixteenth, <laughs> or you get paid on Thursday. Which one is it? <laughs> well, I guess it's both. Been following for a bit now. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. We're trying to spread the barbecue world all over. Thanks for giving me a new passion for cooking. Well, Timothy, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Thank you. And you know what? I'll drink to that. Salute. Everybody, if you have a drink in front of you or with you, if it's not filled up, I'm going to refill mine. And I would like for you to, or us, to take a sip and cheers, man. Barbecue family, definitely. I, I really, it's you guys, man. You guys are the ones who spur me on. And I cook for you guys to see. Not for me. Well, for me, I'm a fat kid, so I got to eat. Mmm. All right. Russell's, Russell's, uh, Best prison movie. All right, so, ooh. Um, everybody's going to say Shawshank Redemption. But I saw a prison movie with Sylvester Stallone in it recently, and I can't think of what it was called. I can't think of the name of the movie, but he was an escape artist, and that movie was dope. It was such a good movie. And there were two of them, actually. It was like a, a like a, the first one, and then there was a part two. And it was dope. Like, that movie was so good. Um, let's think, let's think, let's think. Prison movies. Oh, you know what? I'm going I'm to flip this one a little bit. Um, the Longest Yard was a good prison movie. Tango and Cash was a good prison movie. Um, that was one of my favorites growing up. 
Uh, other prison movies. So I said The Longest Yard. Mm, Tango and Cash, definitely up there. Charles Sank Redemption is up there. That movie with Sylvester Stallone, like I said, he was an escape artist. And that, that movie was dope. Like, it was really, really good. And I watched that one within the last two years. Um, other good prison movies. What about, like, this is, I won't say a black exploitation movie, but it was like a hood, early 90s movie. CB4. It was quotable. So, but I don't, it wasn't that good. Sure enough, man. Uh, is it bottle cap? Is Chris? Uh, says if you were in Australia, you'd be having a fire sale. You know, literally. Unfortunately, nothing to joke about. Well, thank you, Spanky. I, you know, I keep it up, whether it's long or if it's short. But I prefer the long beard. Oh. All right, Maceo says uh, Restaurant Depot has oak tree jerk. It's uh, mid of the line. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind. Yes, salute everyone. I'm, I'm catching up to the comments. Cheers, you two. I'm not burning up pulled pork on a steel drum. I don't burn it. Charles, man, how you doing? Charles Heath, how are you doing this evening? Uh, remember the beef jerky a little walker's wood part of the season. All right. Well, yeah Vanilla coffee porter over there. Chris says, okay Green mile. Ah, yeah, I think I said longest yard <laughs> Chairs not cheers, but chairs Ernest goes to jail. Okay. All right. I see what you're doing there Escape plan. Yes, that was the name of the movie escape plan uh the Rock was The Rock was a good one. I'm trying to think like hmm you know some of the movies about yeah The Rock with Nicolas Cage that was a good one. <laughs> Undisputed. What was Undisputed? That was a fight movie but I don't remember. Ernest goes to jail. You guys are funny. Yeah, Victor, Great Escape was the name of the movie. Escape from Alcatraz, uh, Big Will. I was thinking of an Alcatraz movie too, but I, I couldn't think of the, the exact name. Yeah, Escape Plan was, was uh, Slash Stone. Best Richard Pryor movie. Oh my goodness. Russell is... Ooh. Best Richard Pryor movie. What was that one called? Um, the Kid? See, the problem is Richard Pryor was just before my time. So. Uh, I think it was called The Kid, which is the one where the the father basically hires Richard Pryor to entertain his son. Was that it? That that the movie? The Rock was a good one. First season of Prison Break was awesome. Kind of went downhill after that. All right. Yes, I will fire. Jeez. Wow. Well, Timothy, hopefully, hopefully. All is well, sir, and uh, you have no, you, you know, we're, we're not having this conversation next week, and you tell us that there was a problem. Stir crazy. <laughs> Russell, I am pretty good with movies. I'm good with pop culture. <clears throat> Keep you and your family in prayers. Definitely, Timothy, it's got to be scary. Harlem Nights, oh, yes. Harlem Nights is definitely going to be my, my, my favorite uh, Richard Pryor movie, though the problem though with 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 Harlem Nights, Richard Pryor wasn't the star. It was Eddie Murphy who was the star of 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 uh, Harlem Harlem Nights. But man, you know, quick, <laughs> quick, 
uh, what was that Earth? Not Earthy Kit. What was her name? It was it? It was an Earthy Kit. What was her? What was that girl's name? The one that got shot in the toe. She's like, quick. Eddie Murphy says, shut up. I'm gonna shoot you in your pinky toe. She's like, nah, you ain't gonna do nothing. He was like, pat. She's like, quick. <laughs> you done shot me in my pinky toe. <laughs> or oh man, when Arsenio Hall was standing there with the Tommy guns. And it's like four of them shooting. And they're like, bah, 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 bah. And then the dude's like, pat. Because <laughs> he shot his brother, quick shot his brother. He's, bah, 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 bah. It's like four of them with the Tommy guns. Bah, bah, bah. They're shooting in like the diner or whatever he was hiding in. And then the dude's like, pat. <laughs> and then... I said, your hole is all, he loses his mind. And he starts yelling at the dude. Because he's like, we all shooting all these guns. We all shooting these, these machine guns, these tiny guns. And here you go, shooting a single shot. Pat, what's that going to do? What, what that going to do? Yo, that is like my favorite part of the movie. They are going so hard. Burr, 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 burr. And he's like, Pat, <laughs> with a single shot revolver. <laughs> Oh man, man, shoot! I'm I'm good with movies, man. Yes. Oh, Spanky's his best Eddie Murphy movie. All right, so technically it's not really a movie, but I'm gonna have to say either Juice or, or is it Juice or Raw, like one of his stand-up specials. Yeah. Uh, is Clockwork Orange considered a prison movie. Clockwork Orange, you know, it was one of those things where I need to see it again. It was strange. Brewster's Millions. All right. I think that was, was, was Brewster's Millions the one? Brewster's Millions, was that the one where he was with um, Mortimer and, and the other dude? Escape Plan. All right. John Candy. Oh, and Nights. Yes, it was great. Forgot about that one. I did too. Shalom. Ponce Video Network. Shalom, right back at you. Yeah, I think it was called The Toy. Coming to America, yes. Let's see. Coming to America, so if I had to pick an Eddie Murphy movie, Coming to America is up there, Hall of Nights is up there, and... What was the what was the name of the movie where he was a cop? Um that's all I can think of. And then the the, the frog remixed it. Wang boing. Oh, what was the name of those movies? Della Reese. Thank you very much, Steve. I couldn't think of her name. I'm like, it was an Earthy Kid. Uh, yeah, well, we're already there, Russell. Trading places. Delirious. Delirious or Raw was, was, yeah. Beverly Hills Cop. Thank you very much. That's the one I was thinking of. This is Delirious and Hamburger at McDonald's. He's like, I got some ice cream. I got some ice cream, and you can hand, and you can hand. <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Ah, <laughs> uh, Norbit. Ah, uh, nah, that wasn't a fan of Norbit. Nah, um, nope. Even the Nutty Professor stuff, I kind of think it jumped the shark. Yeah. Nah, nope, nope, Lou. I just, it was funny, yes, but it wasn't funnier than. Like, I put Beverly Hills Cop way before Nutty Professor stuff. And I knew Boomerang was rather serious. And that was, ra it was like, who is this guy? That's, that's Eddie Murphy. That's, that's, that's not, that's not Eddie Murphy. Ah, man, Lou. You know, hold on time out. First and foremost, can I ask you guys to give me a thumbs up or a thumb the video up if you haven't already? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thumb up the video if you haven't already. 48 hours. Ooh, Shreks are up there, but the 
But, like, Shrek, he was a supporting character. So, like, I don't know. I, I You know, he wasn't the star in Shrek. How about a down? A down? Mm. Mm. This is good. The Golden Child. Ooh, that was a good one. Man, that was a good one. Uh, Bowfinger was one of the funniest movies uh, he's done. Was it Bowfinger? Which one was the one where... Was it Bowfinger? The one where they were like, it was him and, and Martin. And they were like, you going to eat your cornbread? The woman, oh yes, that I, we were right there. We were yes, life. That was that was the one I was thinking of. Um, yo, you guys, you guys definitely have my back, which is awesome. So, first love smokers, the woman from the Golden Child. Yes, please, definitely. Goodness gracious, yeah, it was life. It was 48 hours, and then another 48 hours was, was the, the movies I was talking about. It was the ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Mm, this is good, man. You guys are like, this is, this has got the gears going here. All right, Russell, come on. What's the next one? What's the next favorite? They smelled poo on that movie? What? Daddy Daycare. Nah, I won't say he jumped the shark, but he was... He was old adult Eddie Murphy and nah. Trading Places was definitely a good one, but that's the one with Mortimer and whatever the other guy's uh, name was. Harlem Heat and Sunshine. Favorite gangster movie. Uh, Belly is up there. Um, see, I'm 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 a night I'm an '80s baby and a '90s kid, so you talk about gangster movies. So Harlem Nights is back up there again because I was reminded of Harlem Nights. Belly is up there. Um, what was the movie? Ooh. Ooh, this one? A Bronx Tale. A Bronx Tale is up there. Goodfellas is up there. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. There's... What was it? American Gangster is up there with Denzel Washington. Oh, um, what was the Rockefeller movie that the rap rappers the Get Down or Lay Down? I can't remember the, the name of that movie, but yeah. All right, so New Jack City is definitely up there. And actually, funny story about New Jack City. Um, in that movie, I went to elementary school with a guy that was in that movie. Uh, his name was Dustin Felder, and he actually passed away late last year. Unfortunately, he had complications of pneumonia, but he was he turned out to be an acting coach, and he had acting studios or coaching studios around the country. He had one in New York, one in Philly, one in Atlanta, and one in LA. Uh, cool dude, down to earth dude. When I found out he passed away, I knew I had to go to his funeral and I went to his funeral and saw people I hadn't seen from elementary school that I that I hadn't seen in 25 years. So, you know, speaking of New Jack City, I will forever, forever, forever think of Dustin whenever someone speaks of or brings up New Jack City. All right. So uh, here is a unpopular opinion incoming. I didn't really get down with Scarface or Godfather. I didn't. Um. <clears throat> neither one of them people love godfather and they love scarface scarface is up there a little bit more than godfather and maybe it's just because there was so much hype about it when i finally watched it i was like is it it's kind of like watching in living color in reruns as opposed to watching that first run where it was a little more relevant but i don't know maybe it was just me and but yeah godfather i could do without it
Irishman, I don't think I've actually seen it. Heat. Heat was with Denzel Washington, right? Oh, no. Heat wasn't with Denzel Washington. Heat was with Nero. That was a good one, too. Nope. American Gangster was awesome. Paid in full. Thank you, Casey. That's the one I was thinking of. Was it? <laughs> My man took the pure cue and was like, love it. Love it. I think that was LL. All right. Russell says, favorite sci-fi movie. And his Canadian is showing because he spelled favorite wrong. Um, Favorite sci-fi movie. I might, I might have to think about this. Oh, you know what? Nope. Weird Science. I'm a 90s kid. My 90s kid is showing Weird Science. Um, oh, 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 why can't I think of that? Oh, Short Circuit. Uh, Sci-fi movie. Mm. More unpopular opinion coming, incoming. I'm not really all that big of a fan of Star Wars, Star Trek, all of that stuff. <laughs> right over my head. Spaceballs, that was a good one. Um, Avatar, just because it was beautiful. Other than that, sci-fi, like, I'd have to think, like, look back at some of the movies I've watched. Reservoir Dogs is up there. Aliens, all right, I like that. Casino was a good one. That was a good movie. I didn't think much about The Godfather when I first saw it, but I only when I just learned about the storytelling and I watched it again. It blew me away. Well, Russell, you know, that's the thing, man. It's one of those things where, like, here's another one. I, at some point in my life, want to sit down and watch all of the James Bond movies. But there's like 49 of them. And you figure 49 times two hours, that's a long, back on time. I can commit to watching seven seasons of a TV show because I could break it up in a half an hour or 45 minutes at a time. But when you got to sit for two hours watching a movie, that's just hard. Pulp Fiction count as a gangster movie? I guess. I guess, yeah. Brother Bear, what's going on with you? In Too Deep. Yes, Late Eights. That was, that was a great movie. All right, Spanky says Denzel movies. Oh, Gremlins! Gremlins was a great sci-fi movie. Oh, E.T. E.T. was a great sci-fi movie. Yes, Weird Science is a classic. <clears throat> Yo, I'm I'm good for old movies and new movies and <clears throat> getting ready for bed. Yeah, hey, man. Well, no problem. Jack, what's your science project? The Wraith. <clears throat> I, why do I know that one? As far as another sci sci fi movie, um, what was the one with Mel Gibson? The, it was like Armageddon type. Oh, Mad Max. That was the name of that movie. Space Giants, Gamora, Spectra Man. Uh, yeah. Definitely way before my time. I think at this point, End of Watch is my favorite movie. It was done so well and uh, true to life. I gotta look into it. Never watched Star Wars till I was 51. Well, Denzel was great Mo Better Blues. Christine, never seen it uh, from beginning to end. I just, as a car guy, I can appreciate the car that was in the movie. Um... I cannot remember whether or not I have seen Tulane Blacktop either, but I know that is one of those iconic car guy movies. Now, as a motorcyclist, I did watch Any Given Sunday, and I watched it and was like, uh, okay, yeah. The Last Starfighter, I cannot say that I remember that one. Denzel was the pilot. Training Day. Now, Training Day, I uh, I will definitely get down with. No sci-fi wife does not, does not like it. 
Gremlins reminds me of uh, Phoebe Cates, which reminds me of her parts in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yes, her parts. The Outsiders. Will Smith movies. All right. So, um... I'm trying to think, like, because Will Smith is running gamut. Um, obviously, you know, Men in Black is up there, but Independence Day is probably one of my favorite Will Smith movies, and that was because I remember vividly seeing it in the movies. And, um, yeah. Hitch definitely was up there. Um, Hancock was up there. I think one of the only movies I didn't like him in was, um, it was the one recently, it wasn't Tank Girl, like, they were the superheroes that went around and, and, you know, uh, yeah, Wild Wild West was definitely one of the worst Will Smith movies. I Robot was great. Um, I agree with Six Degrees of Separation. Um, I was also thinking one of those lesser known Will Smith movies, The Legend of Bagger Vance, was one of those lesser known Will Smith movies. Um, but uh, what was the name of the movie? Um, <laughs> Uh, I wish I had a dollar for every time someone started singing in West Philadelphia, born and raised. Every time someone finds out I'm from Philadelphia, I wish I had a dollar. What was the name of the movie where it was like, what was it, Mod Squad, Goon Squad? <clears throat> it was recent, and he was in it, and it, it kind of sucked. Pursuit of Happiness was a good movie. The only problem with the pursuit of happiness was um it it they tailored that movie to make it Suicide Squad is what I'm thinking of. They tailored that movie to make it a better movie because apparently the guy who was that Will Smith played was really a jerk. He really was a jerk. After Earth uh is Sun. Let's see. Yeah, Pursuit of Happiness was, yeah. Yes, Renew Barbecue. I remember seeing Independence Day. I had to been like between 14 and, and that, you know, somebody can somebody look up when Independence Day came out because I probably was 14 or 15. And I remember walking around to the movie theater with one of my friends, Zane, and we went to go see it. And it was dope. Like, it was so Good. Will Farrell. Oh boy. So the, th the problem with Will Farrell is his movies, every other one of his movies is good. And you know, like he'll have a run where he'll have two good movies and then there'll be two bad movies. But every other one of his movies is good. Get hard. I don't know if I've seen Get Hard. Like, I kind of remember the previews from that. Is it the future fighting zombies? Will Ferrell or Will Smith? I Am Legend was probably one of the best Will Smith movies. Like, from a serious actor, you know, actor standpoint. And I think I remember seeing that one in movie theater, in theaters too. And I was blown away at the end of that movie. Like, that one was great. Yes. <laughs> 96. So I was 16. Space Cowboys. Uh, Anchorman. All right. Can't stand Will Ferrell. Chris says. Most underrated act, uh, underrated movie. Blazing Saddles. And here's another one I've never seen from beginning to end. Yeah. I watched a fair amount of movies. And I watched a fair amount of movies. But for, like, there's just some movies where I just never watched them. Thank you, Independence Day. Old School was definitely, 
Old School was definitely one of my favorite movies. Whoa, you're my boy! Like, we're going streaking in the, in the quad! Frank? <laughs> Frank, who is we? He's like, yeah, everybody, Frank! Oh, oh. There's nobody there. <laughs> What's the one where Will Ferrell spoke Spanish? Was it Anchorman? Other than that, I really don't know of a Will Ferrell movie where he spoke a different language. Mm -hmm. Desperado? He wasn't in Desperado. Frank the Tank, yes. Okay, I um I know it's a Mel Brooks movie, so I know it'd be hilarious, but I just have never watched it. Hey, Big Steve, thank you. Pursuit of Happiness was great. Yes, it was. But again, the only problem with Pursuit of Happiness is the fact that they tailored the story to make it a better movie. And I think that kind of taints it a little bit for me. Because like some of the stuff that happened, they made it worse for the movie. They made the situations that he was in worse for the movie to make it a better movie. So, you know, to tug at your heartstrings. Airplane. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Shirley, you must be mistaken. He's like, don't call me Shirley. <laughs> uh, excuse me, favorite Western? Oh, man. You see, I'm old. I'm, you know, I'm not that old, right? Uh, yes, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in that one. Um... Uh, Western. Like, I can think of, like, the, the Legend of Wired Earp. That, you know, one of those type movies. Or, uh, what was in there? What movie was it with Kevin Costner when he was, like, in the, in the West? That was a good one. Yeah. I definitely remember when I drank all that moonshine. I had Young Guns was a good movie, yes, with uh, Emilio. That's the one I was thinking of, uh, with Emilio Estevez or one of the Estevez bro brothers. Um, yeah, that was definitely a good one. Tombstone, all right, that was a good one. If you dig Blazing Saddles, uh, check out Top Secret. Young Val Kilmer, I did, I do, I did watch uh, Top Secret. Um, that's the one where they had like the lasers and stuff. Um, I remember that one with Val Kilmer. Um, or I remember a Val Kilmer movie. Uh, Rose Lab Six, like Naked Downside. Posse was a good one. Quigley Down Under. Okay, I remember that one. Open Range. Can't say I remember that one. Dances with Wolves. That's the one. That was such a good movie. Silverado. Oh, you know what else was really good? Somebody asked about Denzel movies. One of the most underrated Denzel movies ever is Glory. If you've never seen Glory, wow. Like, Glory was dope. Like, as a kid, I loved Glory. I think we watched it in school. And, yeah. <laughs> The young says, Fightful goes west. Irving Cowboy, like a rhinestone cowboy. Bling, bling. <laughs> Unforgiven, that was a good one. The most underrated movie. Oh, boy. Ah. Mm. Underrated movie. I'm going to have to think on that one for a while. Because everybody has their own opinions. And, you know, it's subjective, you know, as far as what you're into. Look for the wristwatch and glory. Oh, I do think I remember that somebody messed up and had on the watch and glory. Most underrated Roman J. Israel Esquire. Can't say I know that one. Glory with Matthew Broderick. Was Matthew Broderick in it? I don't, I don't remember Matthew Broderick being in it, but maybe. Ooh. 
what a world. Nah, overrated and tanked the box office. Yeah, they, they just, they, you know, they were on the fame of, because, uh, what was the name of the costume movie? Somebody just said it a second ago. I'm going back and looking. Oh, Dances with Wolves. Then um, Bodyguard came out. Then Waterworld. And it was just like. Yeah. Will Ferrell remade the Spanish sitcom called Casa de Mi Padre. House. My father's house? Okay. Didn't uh, didn't know that. Um, I'm still trying to think of an underrated movie. What was the movie? I don't know. I watched the movie recently and I was like, whoa. Hey, amigos. Smoking Goodness says, what's up, family? Finally made it. Well, thank you very much for hanging out and popping on. Overrated Life of Pi. I think I actually like Life of Pi. I think an overrated movie to me is like Scarface or Godfather. Just because so many people like it, and I'm just like, mm, okay. Star Wars, Star Trek, all of those things overrated to me. But that's just because I'm not into it. Like, I'm sure if I got into it, and you know, I think part of the problem is sometimes when the movies have made up worlds and, and made up characters, and there's too much stuff to remember, I like to lose track. And I'm like, oh, man, like, what? But, ooh, you know what? Um, underrated movie, Gone Girl was a good underrated movie. And, you know, like, um, Us was underrated. Well, it wasn't underrated. It lived up to the hype. But Gone Girl was definitely, was it Gone Girl? I think it was Gone Girl. Yeah. Hmm. Best movie of 2019. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't tell you, Spanky, because I suck at going to the movies. Like, if I sit still in a dark theater, I'm going to sleep. That's just what I do. Like, I don't go to the movies a lot. Every Star Wars movie ever made. All right. Overrated. Uh, he says, stop talking down on my Star Wars, bro. Go to unsub. Chris, do what you got to do, man. It's nothing personal. I'm not talking down to those movies. I just said it's not my thing. I just wanted to ask you, excited about a movie talk. There's no yawning. Heck no, Russell, man. You know what? You, you, didn't, you didn't found the... Uh, a, a, you know, a nice subject here. <clears throat> Definitely. You got me thinking. Favorite Western show, Gunsmoke? Nah, man. The favorite Western show was the one... Was the Young Guns. I think it was the name of the movie. was the name of the TV show. It was Young Guns. <laughs> Mule, Clint Eastwood. <sighs> Only Clint Eastwood movie I really know and... I'm going to say liked was uh Gran Torino. That was it. I'm too young for Glenn Eastwood. Oh man, Idiocracy deserves way more credit. I I agree. Idiocracy was a great movie. <laughs> it's like it's not he's like the plants aren't growing, but we're giving them Gatorade. Like you need to give them water. He's like, but no Gatorade's got electrolytes. <laughs> <sighs> No. Uh, regulators. The only regulators I know was uh, the, the the song. Uh, where we where we putting Boys in the Hood? Boys in the Hood was good, but Boys in the Hood had its place. Like Boys in the Hood wasn't mainstream, so that's eh, that's one of those things where it wasn't for everybody. But Ricky. <laughs> Welcome to Costco. I love you. <laughs> it's got what plants need. <laughs> yeah, no. It's got electrolytes. <laughs> My man was like, give it water. 
and watch it grow. You know what's a very underrated movie? Here's I'm I, Wally. Okay? Wally is such an underrated movie. Um definitely. Wally is underrated. Now, is Wally the most underrated movie ever? No. But Wally is underrated. Um Power Rangers or Ninja Turtles? See, Spanky Man, Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles came about in different times of my life, though, man. Like, I can attribute, there was a, like, you know those those pivotal moments in your life? I vividly remember elementary school, like, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, or, like, 7th and 8th grade. I would walk down the street to one of my, um, you know, Guys lived on my block, but we went to the same school. I would walk down the street to his house, and he always had Power Rangers on. Like, always had Power Rangers on, and we would watch it. And when the episode went off, we knew that's when we had to leave to go to school, right? But Ninja Turtles, it was one of those things where I grew up on Ninja Turtles, and it was always around. But it was so many different iterations of Ninja Turtles. But, like... I don't know. I, that's a push for me. Like, I can't pick one or the other. Brother Bear says, Full Metal Jacket, best military movie. Uh, definitely. Um, it's up there. Full Metal Jacket definitely has a place in my heart as one of the best military movies ever. Um, it, it was so well done. Especially for the time. You know, the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, man. But there's other military movies. Top Gun is a good one. Um, What other military movies? I guess I'm going to put Independence Day in with, with the military movies just because. The Hunt for Red October was a great military movie. Glory, another great military movie. Though it was not modern day military, it was a great military movie. Oh, man. So now I'm, I'm like thinking, 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 thinking. Platoon, I the uh, only reason I don't, I, I just because I don't remember Platoon. While it was wonderful, yes, Boys in the Hood was great. Latest Tarantino movie was incredibly boring. Hey, Mr. Richard, how you doing? He's checking in from Catonsville, which is right up the street. Have you ever seen the Hover Chairs Segway? came out with Wally is going to happen. Oh, I know. I know. I agree. Definitely agree. Movies you hate to admit. You, uh, it made you cry. I am a big softie. Like, I have no problem watering my beard, man. Uh, but, like, movies you hate to admit, it made you cry. I'm going to have to think about that one. Apocalypse Now, a recent assist, Tartar Trooper, I love the smell of, yep, <laughs> best military movie, Aliens, all right, Last Castle, great military and jail movie, Forrest Gump was kind of military movie, I agree, um, I, Forrest Gump definitely was up there, because he spent a decent amount of time in the military, Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> military shows, uh, definitely, I was of the generation of Hogan's Heroes, and not um, not MASH. MASH was before my time. Kur uh, Kirby says, uh, Saving Prior Ryan, a good war movie. Furry. First time, first movie, you took a date and did the yawn move to hold a girl. Oh, man. All right. So, I remember I was a freshman in high school, and... I talked to this girl, like, I don't know why I went and talked to this girl, but her name was Jennifer Ives, right? And I went and talked to her, and come to find out she was a senior. I'm a freshman in high school, and I talked to her, and it was so funny because, like, we talked, and then we were boyfriend and girlfriend, and then we went to the movies, and I couldn't even tell you what we went to see at the movies, but... I remember, like, Jennifer Ives was, was, she was definitely one of the ones that got away. I just, you know, just, you never forget those names. 
<laughs> William says, makes you cry any Pixar movie. Yep. When we were soldiers, Mel Gibson's great Vietnam War movie. Jason vs. Freddy was my first date movie. All right. Band of Brothers was great. Toy Story was my first date movie. No joke. Well, that's what's up. Huh. I wish I could remember what we went to see. I know we went to the movies, but I never remember the aspect of what movie it was we went to see. But yes, uh, Jennifer Ives. Never forget her name. Huh. Toy Story was my fur. Okay, I read that one already. It's cool. 25 still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Some my arms are kind of sore. Been been going back to the gym. Anybody else been back in the gym? Your favorite Shaw Brothers movie. Shaw Brothers. I don't know if I know the Shaw Brothers like by name. All right, so you guys are so horror movies. I wasn't allowed to watch horror movies as a kid, so I never really got into watching horror movies. Uh, LaRosso is it Lasaro? Sorry, it's his best cooking show on Netflix. It was salt, heat, fire, acid, or something like that, or salt, fat, salt, fat, fire. No, salt, fat, heat, acid, or salt, fat, fire, acid. That was a great mini series. It was a four part series, and it was dope. Um, the 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 lady who talks who's the narrator, I guess is the, the person who run, not runs, but does the show. She talks about four different aspects of cooking. Um, and it was cooking with salt, cooking with heat, cooking with um, fat, and then cooking with acid. It was really, really interesting. There was another, there was another show on Netflix that I watched and then, wow, oh, man. Hmm. I can't think of the name of it, but it was it was great. Like it was one of those things where it, it really made me think. <laughs> so D Young says first date activities, uh movies and hitting the skate, right? Alright. I busy to the last cemetery uh, last samurai. Alright, the shield. The shield was a great TV show. I I with Michael Chiklis, I remember that. This is getting a bunch of knife. Get that girl from school, man. I, just, I wish I could. Ugly Delicious. Okay, man. Uh, Ugly Delicious. Is that the one with um, Action Bronson? Because I thought it was called like, oh, you know, that. But that's not um. That's on Vice. The show with Action Bronson. I'm into that one. As soon as you start talking about cooking, the y'all start. Nah, Witcher is dope. I haven't seen Witcher yet. I keep hearing people talk about Witcher. The ones with uh, John Favreau are good. All right. <laughs> nah. The good thing is it's it's like after 10 o'clock. And I know she's asleep. I know why she's asleep upstairs. That doesn't mean she's not going to watch the playback, though. I doubt it. Anyway. Uh, how could you forget Wesley Snipes movies? Um, it's not that we forgot Wesley Snipes movies. We just didn't talk about Wesley Snipes movies because um, Wesley Snipes. And when you talk about Wesley Snipes movies, of course, New Jack City is up there. Blade is up there. I'm a big fan. I like Blade. Um, and of course, Blade was there before Underworld. But oh man, Underworld definitely love the Underworld series. Uh, what are there? Oh, Tu Wang Fu, you know, Julie Newmar, that, that, that was a great one. Betty says, Shame. Shame was a good one. Nah. Uh, yeah, I'm working tomorrow. Not cooking, but yeah, I'm working. Not a fan of Wesley. I think he's overrated. Uh, I, you know who I think is overrated of the same genre, generation type thing? Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I think he's overrated. Romy Rome in the house. 
now i'm chilling man how you doing actually i'm gonna go get some more ice i am running low and i'm gonna top off my cup six underground i started watching that one john i haven't finished watching it jackie chan eh, not really in the martial arts so uh aside from rush hour i really really don't watch many jackie chan movies I'll agree, Steven Seagal is underrated. Uh, next best thing, man, how you doing? Good to see some OGs in the chat. Mark Wahlberg. Um, I really like Mark Wahlberg. Oh, Four Brothers. Definitely underrated movie. With Mark Wahlberg, Four Brothers. If you've never seen that movie... Shooter was definitely another good one. <clears throat> All right, let me get some ice. I'll be right back. This was a good one. You guys are definitely talking about some good stuff tonight. Uh, all right. I think I'm going to be able to finish it. What do you think? I think you reminded me of the night when I had too much moonshine. That is the one live stream that I took down. I got way too wasted on that one. <laughs> Where did I meet my wife? Uh, we grew up around the corner from each other. We lived technically, so I lived on the 7900 block or the 7900 block of my street and she lived on the 7800 block of her street. And she was one, two, three, four, Five, so I got six blocks away. Can you touch my bit? No. All right, man. So the first time you you came in here talking about some you know barbecuing some anatomy, um, yes, Rome Crown Royal. We got the Apple Crown tonight. Um, I didn't have any mixins, so straight up over ice. Mix the crown with Baileys. I don't have any Baileys currently. I'm old Greg. Do you like Baileys? <laughs> do, you like, do you like Baileys? I'm old Greg. Anybody who does not know about old Greg needs to look up old Greg. O-L-D-G-R-E-G-G. -G -G. Old Greg. You're going to be a screwdriver and have some. Willie's Reserve. All right. Well, that's what's up. <laughs> that's why I said no. But, I mean, you know. <laughs> you can see ya. <laughs> uh, I give everybody a chance. Um, I do. Oh man, but this was, this was a good one talking about movies. You know, you never know. And I just want to, I really want to take a moment to thank you guys who are contributing to this conversation because you never know what our conversations are going to segue into. So Russell, are you still out there? Thank you, sir. And I was going to kind of shoot you down like, nah, man, we, we're, uh, <laughs> We haven't gotten there yet, but it was perfect, man. It was definitely perfect. Uh, I, I don't have any Willie's Reserve. I don't think. Oh, Mr. Hawkins says, oh, all right. 
It was Mr. Hackett that had the Willis Reserve. Okay. Mm. Did I tell you about the Hennessy White that I brought back from from um, when I was in Mexico? Hennessy White is something you can't get in the States, apparently, but you can get it everywhere else. So anyone that travels usually brings back Hennessy White and then they sell the bottles. I have it. I'm not a Hennessy fan. So, yeah. The Young says, Wild Turkey American Honey is fire. Now that, I agree. Um, I like Honey Jack. Yes, a lot. Mm. Mm. Honey Jack has definitely done me under a time or two. Doers, 12-year-old doers. I have a a age McCallan around here somewhere, but I don't that's one of those things where it's like ah, I'll drink it every now and again. Um Spanky says he drinks bourbon. I'm not a real big brown liquor guy, which is part of the problem. Like I like vodka. I like I like oh man, you guys know I like moonshine, I like vodka. Uh, give me clear. I said I go from Hong Kong, California. Damian Marley. I I know Damian Marley for his music, not for his liquor. Honey Jack is dangerous. Like I said, Honey Jack has definitely put me under. Tito's or Patron? Uh, that is an easy easy question um i do not like tequila so tito's for sure oh wait am i thinking of the right thing tito's yeah tito's vodka yes yeah you got that man you live too close to mexico i can't do tequila i do not Oof. Eric Watson says, how often do you chat live? Uh, every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, typically from 9 p.m. Eastern to about 11 p.m. Eastern. Craft beer for me when it comes to alcohol. Bushy Bato, I can't stand, can't stand craft beer. And that's typically because most craft beers are like ales. And I'm just not a real big ale fan. Jeff, I see you sneaking in here at the last minute, man. How you doing, sir? You got some catching up to do. We we look. Come on, Ricer. What you got? What you got this evening? Don't tell me no crap about I need to get up and get you know go to work in the morning. I don't want to hear that. Bud Ice or Bud Select? Uh, neither. I'm not a real big Budweiser guy. Mm. I'm I, I'm good, Jeff. I'm good. Definitely good, right, sir? Definitely good. Mm. Sorry for you. Core vodka? Hmm. <sighs> the Eagles made it further in the playoffs than the Cowboys did. That's all I had to say about that. Oh, man. Well... Right, sir. Hopefully you feel better, man. You know what? Sometimes just take some time off, and if you're sick, you're sick. Uh, if you have the ability to post to your community page, I'd highly recommend doing that. That is something. One of the other things, too, to help cultivate um, something on YouTube, as opposed to having to put up a new video, take some of your existing videos and put them into a playlist that counts as cultivation okay and youtube will favor you and or your videos so like on the on a day where i don't have anything going up like no live stream no uh regular videos so like on a monday or a friday mondays and or fridays are typically days or even saturday and sunday when i will get a playlist together make a set playlist and make it public um because it counts as curation and that'll help your YouTube numbers. I'm not a Packer fan. The the Packers beat the, 
The Seahawks? Because that would be the only way I would like the Packers. Let me figure out to go to a little more floor, floor playlist. Well, I mean, it's... It's the creation of playlists, not just simply adding videos to playlists. So one of those things where if you don't have a video going up, create a new playlist. Like try to figure out a way to create a new playlist. Uh, it's adding any other colors to your shirt line. You know what's so crazy, Sean? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I washed my, you know, because my shirts are all gray. I washed my shirts this afternoon, came home from work, put shirts in the washing machine, and you know, I wear my uniform as my wife calls it. Um, but I washed uh, 10 of my shirts today. And you know, the like this shirt also got washed. This is what I've been wearing to the gym and my gym pants. So I washed them and I was looking at them and I was like, man, you know, it would be nice if I could make these in black but the problem is when you make shirts in black you typically have to do an extra screen on the shirt which costs extra money uh, which is why I haven't done black and I've always done gray because gray you don't need that extra screen with black you have to put that base screen so the other colors will pop and won't just fade into the shirt Unless you're going white. <laughs> the young says, make a line of smokers. I'll buy one first. Well, I do actually make 55 gallon steel drum smokers. I'm just, you know, I'm a... Just saying. So to wear all black shirts to help hide them. Uh, Mike? Why did make me... Oh, okay. All right. I'm Chris. Totally. Yeah. Um, like your shirts are red, right? I think your shirts are red. Uh, they're four hundred dollars, the young, and I don't know where you live. Where do you live, sir or ma'am? Just to be, I don't want to assume anything. Uh, all right, Spanky says, do you have any pets, uh, dog or cat? Hamsters don't count. So we have one cat. We have two turtles. Yeah. So our cat is an all, she's an all white cat, all white, I won't say calico, but all white short haired cat, I guess. And uh, her name is Cadbury. You may have heard me refer to or talk to Cadbury. Uh, when when my wife and I got her from the shelter, she was already named. She'd already been named, and because she was all white, uh, she's Cadbury like the Cadbury Bunny. St. Louis. Uh, all right, here's a funny story. Um, my friends and I went to St. Louis because one of my friends knew someone that was from St. Louis or li lived in St. Louis or had family in St. Louis, something. So we all went to St. Louis, and this was in 2000. All right, this was in the year 2000, 99, 2000, because I hadn't turned 21 yet. So we go to St. Louis. So there are Dun Rush, Pook, Taj, myself, five of us. And we go to St. Louis and we're just hanging out, like seriously hanging out. Hotel rooms, um, going clubbing, and, and this was back in the day clubbing. So it wasn't like now clubbing, it was back in the day clubbing. Where the club, because in St. Louis, like whatever the club was, the every night of the week was a different type of music. It wasn't like it was a hip hop type thing. Nah. So we went into the club on the wrong night and it was like EDM night, right? So electronic dance music. So it was like techno music back in the day it was all techno, right? Like now 
It's called EDM, Electronic Dance Music. Before it was just techno, right? So we go in and, you know, yeah, it was techno night. And we pre, you know, we pre-game. So my friends were all over 21. I was just the youngest one. So I wasn't 21. So everybody chipped in $10 every night. And we would get a bottle of Hennessy and a bottle of Alizé. And between Alizé and Hypnotic, every single night. Oh, gosh. But I got hammered going into the club. And the thing was, when we walked in the club, they had two different people on the door. One person was checking IDs, and they would tell you which line to get in. Well, me being me, the, the person's like getting an under 21 line. I'm like, all right, I get in the over 21 line. <laughs> get a bracelet. I get a bracelet that says I can drink. I go right to the bar, get a drink. Yeah. So get a drink, and by the time we get into the club, I'm like, y'all got to pee. So I go to the bathroom. On the way back from the bathroom, like, on it was a stage. And on the stage, you know, big old speakers, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I see a security guard bouncer type dude. He was standing in the corner of the stage. And I'm like, all right. I was like, yo. I was like, man, yo, there's people up on the stage. He was like, yeah. I said, who can get up on the stage? How I get up on the stage? He was like, if you can get up there, you can get up there. I'm like, so you mean if I get on the stage, I can get on the stage? He was like, yeah. I was like, all right. In my drunk mind, I was like, okay. So I found something to climb on, climbed up, and got on the stage, right? And then I saw this dude. This dude had these two glow sticks, and he was just like, like the glow sticks. Now, mind you, my man might have been high on something. Uh, back in the day, we used to call it ecstasy. Now they call it Molly, right? So he was high on something. And he was just a, dancing away with these glow sticks. And I'm like, yo, can I see your glow sticks, man? Can I can I use your glow sticks? He was like, sure, bro. He gives me the glow sticks. And I'm like, all right, great. So I'm like dancing with the glow sticks, right? Like having the time of my life with the glow sticks. Because I am drunk time of my life with the glow sticks like yeah and then you know you that feeling when people are looking at you and i'm looking out into the crowd right and i see my four friends and they're all like one of them is here one of them is here one of them is here and one of them is here but they all like like spread out right and i see one person point to me and i see him look and i see the next person point to me and I see the next person look, and I see the next person point to me, and I see the last person look, and they point to me, and I'm like, yeah! Like, I'm having the time of my life on the stage with these glow sticks, right? So the whole thing was, I had been gone to the bathroom, and of course, I'll find this out later. I'd been gone to the bathroom, and my friends were looking for me like, yo, where's Dash? Like, he been gone for a while and they were looking for me. So they spread out and started looking for me. And then, like I said, I'm up on the stage. So I'm drawing attention with the glow sticks. I'm on the stage and they start pointing at me like, yo. So when I see them all, I'm like, oh, yo, I'm up here. I'm up here with the glow sticks I'm up here. So they are like, yo, he's on the stage. How is he on the stage? So they're all pointing at me and they all can like converge and then we come, they come over to the edge of the stage. So I'm about to get off the stage. <coughs> and the dude that that gave me the glow sticks comes back like, bro, I need my glow sticks back. And I was like, what glow sticks? He's like, yo, the glow sticks, I gave you the glow sticks, you know, you were having a good time with the glow sticks. I'm like, man, these are my glow sticks. And I was dead serious. Like, I vividly remember looking him dead in his face like, Yo, these my glow sticks now. And he kind of just tucked his tail and walked away. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Oh my goodness. Uh uh uh. And then oh, so I met Nelly too while I was down there. Um, on the, under the arch, he was down at the arch filming something, and I met Nelly. But yeah, shut up, man. Don't call me a bully. Uh, yeah. Nope, they're not red. 
They are black. You can get one of my steel drum smokers in any color you want, just as long as it's black. Um, the high temperature paint comes in black, man. That's that's it. And I know I could probably put like a black base and then put other colors on top of it, but I ain't going for all of that. I don't know which one it was, but yo, I remember going to that club and then we went to Steak and Shake. That was the first experience I had at Steak and Shake. And mind you, just how I'm sitting here like this, this is how I was sitting at the Steak and Shake, like, yo, I need to eat something. Like, yo, like, now. And uh, I think I had, like, a double or triple burger and a milkshake, and it was, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, but it was so good. <laughs> but, man, like, I, you know, I don't remember much about St. Louis except for what's funny is um, when we got off the plane, we were headed to our hotel and the dude who was our like the, the, the courtesy shuttle driver, we get in the van and, you know, we're chopping it up with the dude and, and we're talking and we're like, you know, my man, my man Rush is like, yo, man, he's like, my man, what's your name? My man was like, Ken. He was like, Ken, like as in Ken Folk? He was like, no, 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 like Ken, like the Bobby Dow, Ken. He was like, hold up, your name is Ken? He was like, yeah, Ken. <laughs> that was our first experience with the, uh, the Southern vernacular, let's put it that way. <laughs> My man was like, yo, we, like, the rest of the ride, it was like, yo, Ken, 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 Ken. He was like, yeah, Ken. <laughs> man. Uh, look, look, look. Don't worry about that, man. <laughs> Yo, you know what's even funnier is I held on to those glow sticks like as a, a trophy from that trip for years. Like I remember seeing them every now and again, like in a drawer or in a box or something. And I just, yo, that and also um, when I met Nelly, I got him to autograph the ticket for me going up to the arches or seeing the top of the arch. Uh, hey, Mr. Hmm? Mr. Hockett, I just read your comment and, uh, you know, you said yawn. <laughs> no way. Auto engine paint is not high. Um, auto engine paint, I think, is rated at 800 degrees, but grill paint is rated at 1500 degrees. And I rather the, uh, the higher temperature paint. <laughs> she didn't make me throw them away. A first love smokers, man. Mm. Totally understand. Thank you guys so very much for hanging out. Really do appreciate it. Uh I made you throw them away. Nope, 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 nope. Pets, Texas style, and Texas barbecue guy. Are you the same person? Just, just wonder. You guys have very similar looking. I thought you were might have been Texas barbecue guy. I thought you might have been Pets, and you know, like one or the other. Drinking apple. Yes, indeed. Okay. All right. Just very similar channel. Um, icons, that's all. What I can see. Of her mom I used to work at Nelly's mom in McDonald's. She said, Nelly will always come in, rap, dance for them to get free food. Shoot. I would too. If if I was hard on my luck and had to, you know, trying to get something to eat, why not? You know, it's so funny, right? When you see someone as a as a child. And you look at them and you're like, man, that little boy annoying. And then you fast forward 10 years and then they pop up and they're like, oh, man, this is this guy from St. Louis. He was a rapper and his name is Nelly. Like, wait, Nelly, Nelly? Nelly, Nelly? Like, what? Nelly? 
Nelly, Nelly from around away, Nelly. Like, so here's a, a true example of that. I grew up on uh, in Philadelphia, and there's a rapper. His name is Cassidy. He had a couple songs, like a couple. Um, but he grew up on the block above mine. Didn't know him. Didn't know him at all. But he's one of those, you know, he claims Philly. And I was like, where are Philly from? He's like, Mount Airy. What? I'm from Mount Airy. He's like, where are Mount Airy? He's like, oh, on the street. I'm like, what? Like, I live on the next hundred and I never heard of you. But that's it. You know, sometimes you keep your circle small. At rallies, get your store right. Oh, uh oh. Them's fighting words. Maybe she worked at both places. Fellas, you're both pretty, okay? You're both pretty. It doesn't, doesn't matter. He's, she's probably past it and doesn't work at rallies or McDonald's any longer. So it's okay. Oh, goodness. All right, guys. I am almost at my wits end. But if I ever get back out to St. Louis, uh, I'll, you know, I'll definitely let you know. Well, uh, Chris, you let me know when you're going to be out in Chats Forward because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I leave Philly to stay with my auntie in Baltimore? No. So I left Philadelphia and actually we moved outside of the city. Well, full disclosure, my mom moved outside of the city when I was, when I graduated high school. Um, so we lived outside of the city Then my wife and I, my now wife and I got an apartment and we lived together in Norristown. Actually it was West Norriton. We lived in, no, 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 it was Norristown. We were a block. We were, our street was the last street in Norristown. Across the street was West Norriton. So we lived in Norristown and then from Norristown is when we moved to Silver Spring. Then we moved from Silver Spring to Baltimore. So, yeah, we haven't lived all over, but we've lived a couple different places. But yeah, Chris, definitely let me know when you're going to be in Chad's Ward. There is a Bel Air, Maryland, um, in case you did not know. All right, well, if I get to St. Louis, I definitely will. Uh, if I was going to Texas, I'd rather go to Austin. I got the Fresh Prince reference, but it was Bel Air is where um, his auntie was. It was I, it was my auntie. I'm from the Bel Air. But there is a Bel Air, Maryland. <laughs> What he said, moving to Baltimore. That was wrong. It's okay, though. I'm all about pop culture, so I usually catch almost every single reference. I mean, no matter how obscure or mundane, it's a gift and a curse. Trust me. I don't owe him a dollar. Why don't I owe him a dollar? Man, I don't owe you nothing. I don't even know you. This is the first time you commented on the live stream. You can't just come in here, pop up, talking about how I owe you fifty dollars. No. Texas owes me. Well, if you say so. Yeah, you know what? I keep hearing, I won't say horror stories, but I keep hearing mixed reviews about Franklin's. And it's one of those things where 
like, when in or if I go to Austin, I will probably try and place an order at Franklin's that I can pick up. Because I don't want to stand in line, though I'm sure it might be worth it to stand in line. I just don't want to stand in line. That's one of those things. KFC or Popeyes? Popeyes for sure, because Popeyes has spicy chicken. KFC has original and uh, extra tasty crispy. Yeah. I have never been to New Orleans. Um, I do actually have friends. Well, I used to have friends in uh, Baton Rouge. And I had always planned or wanted to come to Louisiana to link up with them. But when I was talking with him, it was right before Hurricane Katrina and I lost touch with a lot of those people. Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris's Franklin's is overrated and he's heard that too. Texas Barbecue Guy says Franklin's is good, but he prefers Salt Lake. Um, yeah. So, Texas Barbecue Guy, where in Texas are you? I don't think I've asked you that before. There are a lot of other good places in Austin. Well, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to make it to Austin this year. I'm going to because I haven't been to Austin in 12, 13 years, I feel like. But, yeah. All right, Texas Barbecue Guy says he's in Houston. Huh. Houston is far from Austin. Far, far away. Dear God, please with me a bird so I can fly far, far, far from here. Went to Saltgrass State House in Texas. It was also where in Texas? Texas is not a small state. What about Terry Blacks or Valentinas? So... I've heard about Blacks. Um, I've also heard about Valentina, Valentina's. Uh, Valentina's is on the list of places where I need to go. Like, definitely. Uh, he said it's a three-hour drive. Uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome, telling a different uh, place than it was 12 years ago. Like, better or worse? Saltgrass in the Texas state. Okay. To add it to the list. Uh, huge shoot. Austin was huge when I was there, you know, however long ago. I mean, it took you like half an hour to drive from one edge of this one, yeah, one edge of the city to the other edge of the city on 35. Beautiful girl, are you in Austin? Or are you just near Austin or what? Such Austin shows. My man, well, barbecue i'm sorry to hear that dude yeah a lot of my friends um it was a motorcycle web forum that i met these guys on and a lot of them well it was based out of baton rouge so but a lot of the guys i mean lived in medi 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 year medi sorry st charles lake charles baton rouge new orleans i mean all around Baton Rouge. I just never made it down there. And then, like I said, Katrina happened. I live south of Houston, but I serve in Austin, okay? Austin's a bunch of vegans now. Wow, that's a huge missed steak. There were a lot of hippies in Austin. Like, there were and still are, I'm sure. Because, damn. Keep Austin weird. Oh, goodness. 
That was an understatement. <laughs> hey, look, guys, I, uh, I'm getting ready to head out to Galveston, Texas this past weekend and try some barbecue. We had and was not impressed. University draws them. Okay. Um, you might be right. Goodness. I don't know, though. I wouldn't attribute all of the vegetarians, vegans, or whatever, alternate diet folks. <laughs> Would it be West L.A. or East L.A.? Because technically, L.A. is West and Austin is East. But... This is one I haven't heard before. He said, later, Tater. Goodness. Oof. I'm going to fall. Hopefully, I'm going to fall right to sleep. Yeah, Bushibato, I agree, man. Um, Austin is definitely known for the barbecue. Um, anything above the I-10 is all Yankees. Man, get out of here. Shoot. You a Yankee if you above the Mason-Dixon line. You don't know nothing about what's Southern and what's not. So that's a good job for me. Texas Pitch Stop Barbecue. Well, that sounds pretty dope. Arm is itching. <sighs> All right, guys. Um, I am signing off. Really want to take a moment and say thank you guys again. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up. Uh, even if it's on your way out, I'd really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Williams is Southern by the grace of God. Oh, boy. William, you missed it. Uh, yeah. Yankee and Kings, Arthur's Court, I guess. Not some I ten, yeah. But what's your bottom? I thought you lived in California. Thank you, Chris. Later, right, sir. Hopefully, all is well. Hopefully, you feel better, dude. Like, seriously. Um, when it's no chance, yes, indeed. All right, but I mean, you the I ten is the I ten for you, it's just a east, east, west. Uh, well, that's not just all right. Good night, guys. Thank you so very much again for hanging out. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's so funny. I'm signing off, and there are more people entering in the live chat. I'm seeing the count go up. Hey, if you're new here, you have to comment down below. If you don't comment, I will call you out. Texas barbecue guy, yes. Catch you next time, sir. Thank you very much again, as always. And <laughs> man, that's late show is done. I am done. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Dashy Carson. <sighs> no way. I could hold someone's attention for an hour, but not two. Oh goodness. Man, that's, that's just a bit much. Two hours? What? No way, Jose. All right, what's your bottle says good night. Yes, I am getting ready to hang this up and say good night. Uh, Renew Barbecue, happy birthday. No, not, not you. I'm sorry. Where's John? Where's uh, John from uh, Drive Crash? Today is his birthday. Trying to crack my neck. There we go. All right, guys. I am gone. Thank you very much again for hanging out. Greatly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.